Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be showing you how to set up and configure your fans for both your CPU, your chassis, or potentially even AIO on a ASUS motherboard using both BIOS controls and also software within Windows. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to try and demystify the uh, logic behind how ASUS motherboards work in terms of how to set up your CPU cooler, your chassis fans, all that kind of stuff, how to use QFAN, and how to get it all running nicely and keep it all nice and quiet within the BIOS and also within Windows. Now, I should start off straight away and say that because you can set the fans up in the BIOS, you don't necessarily have to do it in Windows as well. So if you want to do the first section of this video and just set up your fans in the BIOS and not install any additional software, you certainly can do. Alternatively, if you do want to have your fans set up initially in the BIOS and then go into Windows after and then have some other granular control which you can adjust on the fly without having to reboot your system, then certainly you can do that as well. If you only have the software installed, potentially it doesn't quite work right, so you will need to do the BIOS setup first of all, regardless of which method you do. So with that said, let's get on with it and we'll show you exactly how it's done. Now today's video, we're gonna be using the ASUS ROG Strix B660-A as a kind of test bed for what's going on here, but it should be pretty much the same for most ASUS motherboards on the market in the last few years. So with that said, let's get on with it. Okay, so we've rebooted into the BIOS here. So this is the main BIOS, as you can see. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is on the first page is we're gonna go into QFAN control. Now you can already see what is going on here. All the different fans that we've got or fan headers, they will be visible in the fan profile section. So we've got our CPU fan, chassis fan number one, number two, number three, our AIO pump, which currently isn't connected. And there's also an optional fan header there, which also is not connected. So what you want to do is click on QFAN control. And this is the main section. So each one of these on the left hand side is going to be one of the individual headers. So CPU fan, chassis fan, one, two, three, etc., and the AIO pump header. And you can go into each one and you can customize these all individually. So what you need to do is to work out basically what is going on with your fans. So for your CPU fan, what you want to find out is whether or not your CPU fan is in DC mode. So if it's a three pin fan connection, it'll be DC mode. If it's a four pin, it'll be PWM mode. You can leave it to auto detect, but ideally if you can select the right one off the bat, that makes life a lot more easy. So select the one which is appropriate to you. Now in this section for this individual fan, you can choose various different settings. So currently we're set to manual. You can, if you want to, set it to full speed and you'll hear the fan ramping up in the background there. Turbo, which is uh, a slightly more elevated curve. Now these aren't actually fan curves as such, but people do refer to them as the fan curve or fan profile. So if I do say fan curve, this is basically what I'm meaning. This is the kind of trajectory of the fan speed against the temperature. So fan speed is on the left-hand side from zero to 100%. And on this bottom line, we've got zero up to 100 degrees Celsius. So depending where you are, obviously 70 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius. So you can kind of work out halfway between there would be roughly 50 degrees Celsius. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you. So that is the kind of basic layout. I'm gonna set this to manual for now. And we've got also the same for chassis fan one. So this is set to PWM because there is a four pin fan connected to that particular header. And again, we've got this individual setup here. Chassis fan two, we've set to PWM mode. Chassis fan three is PWM. The AIO, we haven't actually got one detected, so I've left it as auto detect. But again, depending what sort of AIO you've got, if it's a three pin, which most of them tend to be, set it to DC mode. If your AIO or water pump is a four pin, set it to PWM mode. So if something like the Arctic Freezer 2 series, those you would set to PWM mode because they are four pin. If you're using something like the Thermaltake Tough Liquid 360, that is a three pin, so you would set that to DC mode. And of course, you can set it exactly how you want to using the manual configuration, etc. So that is the kind of the basic gist of it. What you want to do is to actually work out what your fans can actually do, what they're capable of. So if you go into QFAN tuning, and you'll get this message here saying click the OK button, basically what this is going to do is going to speed up all of your fans individually 
to their highest and their lowest settings. So then the motherboard knows what your system is capable of. So click OK, and then you'll get the bar saying Q fan tuning. I'll fast forward through this so you don't have to put up with it, but do expect your fans to go to full speed and then drop down to virtually nothing a couple of times on each individual header. Okay, so Q fan tuning has finished and it's now decided what the minimum duty cycle of each fan has. So the CPU fan is changed from 30 down to 15, chassis fans gone down to 20, 21, 20. So they are all the same fans, so that's about right. So when you're happy, click OK. And now that the fans are kind of memorized or the capabilities of them are memorized, you can go back in and again, tweak them however you see fit. So if you want to tweak them, set them to in the manual section there and you can move these around. If you just want it standard, you don't want to mess around, that's actually not too far off what mine was set to anyway. So you can leave it as standard, but you don't have to have it standard across the range. So you can have your CPU fans set as standard and maybe have your chassis fans set as all being silent. So you get the general idea. You can configure them all individually. You can't unfortunately do all of them at the same time, which is a little bit of a shame, but it does make sense because not necessarily all fans will be having the same profile. Again, CPU fan, if you want to make it so that it is more user configurable, you can just drag these around to wherever you want to. So if you're using the latest AM5 processors and 13th gen where they get really hot really quickly, you might actually want to lower this so that there's more of a line there and maybe drag this down a little bit because they are okay to get warmer, but you don't want your fans necessarily getting very fast very quickly. So if you had a profile which was kind of something like this, where we're almost at full speed at about sort of 60 degrees Celsius, then you're gonna find that your fans are gonna be in this kind of rev range quite frequently. So by lowering it down, I generally do 20 at 20. For those of you that watched our videos, you'll probably know this off by heart because I've done it so many times. But yeah, we set it to about 20 to 20. Then I do 60 at 60. So somewhere around here and then 100% at 70 degrees. So that is my kind of normal setup. So once you've done that, once you're happy in here, you can click on apply, and this will apply all of the fan settings for the various headers. So again, I'm gonna set that to uh, manual, go back to how we had it set. So that essentially is kind of it. You can just leave it as that, and everything will be good, and you can have it as loud or as quiet as you want to. The only thing is, when you're in Windows, you're not gonna have access to this to make fine tuning to it. So let's go into Windows now and I'll show you how to make fine adjustments actually in the Windows environment. Because we're done here now, we can click on Escape. And what you wanna do is do Save and Exit, or F10, save your bar settings, and then we can go back into Windows. When you click OK, it will tell you again all the settings that you've just changed. We'll just click OK, and the system will reboot. Okay, so for the next part of this is the software for Windows. So we're not gonna use the ASUS software because recently, because of the way that the software works, it doesn't work particularly well with some of the Windows 11 security features. So we're gonna be ditching that. So instead we're gonna use a free piece of software which is infinitely more flexible and configurable. This is called Fan Control. It's a free piece of software. You can get it over on GitHub or you can go to getfancontrol.com. Uh, I've already downloaded it version v154 so once you've downloaded it you can find it in your downloads folders and there's fan control zip so we're going to extract that now and just extract it back to the downloads folders fine there you can if you want to move this somewhere more permanent if you wish to keep it you can choose to run this all the time or just uh, as a like a one-off the choice is entirely up to you and what we're going to do is we're going to go to fan control exe Double click on it and we'll get the user account control warning come up. So we'll just click OK. And this is the first time running. So it's gonna kind of drag you through it. So it says about reading the license agreement. We won't bother with that. And for the first time setup, it'll go through and do all the settings for you. Now I would strongly suggest you let it do this. Um, you don't have to, you can click on no, but I would suggest doing it. So click on yes to proceed. And it's gonna basically try and pick up on your motherboard, CPU and GPU, fans, any embedded ones, etc. And yeah, basically it should pick up the right settings for you there. So just click on OK. And now what it's gonna do is gonna try and work out what fans are connected to what sensors on your board. 
Now, quite often on a motherboard, the sensors don't always kind of relate logically to the fan headers. So it's kind of going through and pairing them up. So just uh, let it go on and do this. Don't be too concerned, but you will need to possibly rename your actual fan headers in this software just for it to make a little bit more sense later on. But anyway, we'll let it do this and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. So now what it's gonna do is gonna work out the fan stop detection, uh, pretty much like it did earlier, whilst we were in the BIOS section. And now it's going to see where fans actually start spinning. So basically how much voltage the program has to put into the PWM or DC controller to actually get a rotational feedback come back through the PWM or DC sensor. Okay, so now you can identify and name your fans. So if you wanna know which ones are which, just basically slam this slider right the way up to the top and you'll find that some of your fans somewhere will speed up. And that one there is our CPU fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in CPU there and just set it back to a sensible speed. We'll do that one there, which is pretty much likely to be the chassis fans, which are all controlled on a single hub. And obviously the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070, it knows already, so that's absolutely fine. Let's turn that down a little bit and there we go. So now you get the option to, if you want this program to start when Windows loads, if you, so if you want to have this available to tweak your fans, you can do, and also you can start it minimized. And also you can hide the redundant speed RPM selection. So basically the ones which are not usable. So I would click all three, click okay. And there we go. So there are our CPU fans, chassis fans, and our graphics card fan. Now of course you can set these however you want to. But for me personally, I like to have a little bit of additional control. So what you can do, there are curves or fan gradients. So they've got a standard flat curve example. So that is just a 50% fan speed. So you can, if you want to adjust that. So if you wanted to just keep your fans at 65%, then you can go into, say for instance, our chassis fans here, turn on curve, click on the down arrow and choose the flat curve example. So now those fans are going to hit 65% of their RPM speed. And that is it. They'll just stay there all day long. So that's not really ideal. And the rest of them are just doing like an automatic configuration. So if you want to add your own curves, what you need to do, click on the big plus. And then you've got various options of what you can do. So there's uh, offsets and stuff here. You've also got a auto. So you can just choose auto if you want to, a sync, mix, a flat line curve. So if you wanted to say have maybe your water pump. So let's do that actually. Let's uh, add in a flat one and we'll just jack that all the way up to 100% because ideally you want your AIO pump running at that speed pretty much all the time. Uh, we'll call this AIO flat 100 and there you go. So if you had an all-in-one header you could basically go into it, choose your flat curve example, and then choose AIO flat 100, obviously. It'll still work the same on a chassis fan, so these will now ramp up to 100%. So you get the general idea. So let's go back to our flat curve. Keep them nice and quiet. Actually, let's turn that curve off for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our own custom one. So you've got choices of add linear or graph. I quite like graph. So this gives you this kind of thing here. So what I'm gonna do is our temperature source, you can choose. There's absolutely tons of things you can choose from, parts of the motherboard, temperatures, VRMs, etc. But most of you are probably gonna to wanna to do your CPU. So do CPU package or CPU core package is probably the most accurate one. So I go with CPU package. And then if you don't like this particular curve that it's on or this kind of line, you can just go into edit. And this is where you've got a load of control. So. I normally have mine, like I said, 100% at 70 and at 60, we're gonna have 60%, so we'll drag that down. And also 40 is one of the other ones, so 40 there. And I don't really want them going down to zero because that's a bit pointless, so let's drag that up to like 20. And that, for me, is pretty much the perfect graph. Now, obviously, you can do whatever you like with it. You can have it a lot lower move these to wherever you feel fit. If you do want zero RPM or whatever, you can do. As long as obviously your fans will support it, 
This will kind of override it, so you, sometimes you may get your fans making odd noises because you've actually set them lower than what they're actually able to do. But again, you can tweak this to your heart's content and basically do whatever you want to. So let's get back to 40 at 40 and 20 at 20. So that is what I'm going to choose. And I'm going to call this MUB standard curve with a spell. There we go. And also, if you want to use this graph on multiple fan headers, you can just do copy graph. And then when you go into the next fan header, you can choose paste graph. So that makes life easy. So there we go. There's our MUB standard curve there. So let's go into our CPU now. And we're going to apply the MUB standard curve to our CPU fan. And also, I'm going to apply it to our chassis fans as well. So that is pretty much it. That is all you need to do. Uh, graphics card wise, again, you probably could do the same thing actually. Let's do that curve and we'll give it the uh, the MUB standard curve also. And that's it. You don't need to click apply or anything. It just does all the changes straight away. So that is probably what I would consider the best possible way of configuring fans on Asus motherboard. The software is very, very minimal, very lightweight, uh, isn't bloating and it gives you an absolute ton of control. And especially the fact that you've actually got graphics card control in the same settings as you've got your chassis fans and CPU fans and potentially AIOs, etc. There's also things you can do. So you can go into settings. You can, if you want to run setup again, you can choose assisted setup and you can pair fans and detect fan speeds and identify fans and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you can go in, change the appearance, etc. donate or visit their official website, etc. Yeah, plenty of options there. If you don't want it to start with Windows or you don't want it to start minimized, you can just get rid of those tick boxes and it will kind of remember what you need to do when you're not using it. Just minimize it. You can close all your windows and you'll find it down in the bottom here in the taskbar. So fan control is running. You can right click and choose open or configurations, etc. Kind of do whatever you, you want to do with it. So yeah, pretty decent piece of software. I like it. Seems to work very well and is miles, miles better than anything Asus could throw together themselves. So there you go. Sorry the video was a little bit long-winded, but I think this is information which is uh, very important for a lot of you, especially if you are using an ASUS motherboard. ASUS have fallen dramatically. They've got a fantastic brand name and they've been riding on the ROG gaming thing for so many years, but their software is absolutely atrocious. Luckily, the BIOS is actually pretty decent, so if you just want to set up your fans in the BIOS, the first part of the video is absolutely fine. That is all you need. But if you do want to have that little bit of extra control and potentially control the speed of your graphics cards, etc., then I think the uh, fan control software there is absolutely excellent. And again, links will, will be in the video description, so you can check out it for yourself. So it is completely free, so knock yourself out. If you don't like it, delete it. Happy days. So there you go. There is how to control all of your fans on your Asus motherboards. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.